Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial video. So this is the series where I'll be teaching you guys all the GFX and VFX that I use in my videos. And in today's video, we're going to be learning on how to add flow into your clips on Android and iOS. But before that, I must apologize to everyone who was looking forward for the tutorial on how to do the rotating 3D text on iOS. I did the research quite a bit but I couldn't find a free app that helped me doing the same stuff I did on Android tutorial so I'm really sorry about that guys. Also if you guys know any app that can achieve the same effects let me know down in the comment section. Also if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you got to learn something new today. So without further ado, let's jump right into the first part of the video. Oh yes, it's gonna be a long video, but bear with me if you want to learn how to add flow like me. The app I'm gonna be using on Android is called Node Video. Uh, I'll be leaving a link to it in the description. It's a really powerful app and has a lot of features like all the PC softwares. Once you open it, you will see an interface like this. To get started, just tap on the new icon. Now copy these settings. You can change the preview resolution to 25% if you have a low end device. Cause if you don't have a good CPU, it's gonna take a lot of time to render the preview. For the sake of tutorial, I'm gonna be changing the FPS to 24. Since my clip doesn't need to be that long or detailed. You guys probably should stick to 30 fps but you can definitely drop it down to 24 or 21 depending on the clips or your device. Now tap on the plus icon to import your videos. Then go to media on video and select the file you want to work with. Once you import the video it should look something like this. You can tap on this play or pause button to see a preview. I have a Snapdragon 855 CPU and it still took me some time to render the preview completely so make sure to keep that in mind while setting the preview resolution. Now let's go to the audio and uh, mute the audio. If you don't mute the audio it will get glitchy while doing a slow-mo video. After that tap on this plus icon then go to time. Select time remap. Now that should pop up in your effect panel. It is quite similar to how you do on After Effects. Now tap on the settings icon right beside time remap then go to curve editor. Now this here what you see is called a value curve. In a normal clip the curve is by default linear. You can use this slider to expand the timeline. Also by default the starting and the ending of the clip has two keyframes. Also if you don't know what a keyframe is, it is essentially a point of reference in the timeline. This is your timeline by the way. Now we're gonna scroll through the timeline and find where exactly the character shoots the bullet. What I personally do is watch when he starts to scope out of the scoping animation. That is how I do on After Effects as well. Now to add a keyframe simply tap on this plus icon and as you can see there is a keyframe in the middle now. Now the next step is very important because we are going to add some flow to it. Now just tap on the keyframe, after that tap on this icon and you will immediately notice two handles popping out in the graph. Now just follow along and copy what I do. We're gonna make these handles go vertical, that is straight up and straight down. Now tap on the first keyframe, again select that icon. Make whatever handles pop out vertical again. The graph between two keyframes should look something like this. Now what we did here is making the graph go vertical, then horizontal, then vertical again. The more vertical the graph is, the speed of the clip is gonna be more and the horizontal part of the graph is gonna be slower. Now let's come back to the last keyframe and follow the same steps.
Now once that is done, you can check the preview by tapping the play or pause button. You have to wait a bit to let the preview render first. And as you can already see, we got some nice flow in the clip. You can also adjust the keyframe and the steepness of the graph and the slope of the graph according to your needs and according to how much slow and fast you want in your clips. It will depend upon how much impact you want on your clips by doing the slow-mo. I'm just gonna fast forward these processes and let you guys see the final result. Okay, after fidgeting a bit and adjusting some of the keyframes, here we have the final preview. Uh, that looks nice, right? It has some good flow in it. Once you guys are done with that, you can add music and different sound effects to it. Now to render, you can simply tap on this root icon, then go to exports and export the video according to your aspect ratio and resolution. Now let's jump right into iOS, shall we? So the app I'm using here is called the Slow Fast Motion Video Editor. Again, it's completely for free. Once you open that, you should see an interface like this. Just for the sake of tutorial, I'm gonna be using the same clip. Just select your clip and tap on choose to get to the editor window. It does give you an option to trim the video first, but I'm just gonna skip it since it's already trimmed. The graph you see here is actually a speed graph. So it's like, it's not exactly the same like uh, we did on the Android one, but it's pretty similar. So by default, it gives you four equidistant keyframes. You can tap and hold on any of these and delete them if you want to. You can tap and hold anywhere on the line to create a new keyframe as well. Now I like this kind of graph more than the other kind of graph that I showed before in Android. Uh, just because it's very similar to Sony Vegas Pro. Now I've said this before in the past, I'll say it again. Sony Vegas Pro is much more optimized than Adobe After Effects when it comes to you know velocity and uh, syncing. It's just so much easier. Even though I primarily use After Effects myself. Anyways, we're gonna follow the same steps we did in Android version. We're gonna find just when the guy shoots. Now once you find that, just tap and hold to create a new keyframe. Now as you guys can see on the left side of the timeline, it says fast on the top and slow on bottom. And it means exactly that. So I drag the keyframe that I put when the guy shoots the bullet up so that it goes faster. Now the other two keyframes that are right beside the center keyframe are at the right spot by coincidence. So I'm not gonna mess up with them. Now I drag them down because I want the part before he shoots to be slow. Now we're gonna tap and hold to make a new keyframe. The reason I made a new keyframe here is because I want the part of the video from this keyframe to this keyframe to go slow and at the same speed. For the clip to go in the same speed, you need to drag the first and last keyframe of the clip uh, to the same level. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing on the right side as well. So you guys will see this wave again it's a bit different from the wave we created in Android, but it still works the same. The first keyframe stays at a higher level so that the clip starts at a higher speed. Then the second and third become slower so that I drag them both to the same level and below. The central keyframe again goes higher because I want that part to be fast. After the shot, I want the clip to slow down, so I'm gonna drag the next keyframe down. I want the clip to stay at the same speed for a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and time a bit and make another keyframe and bring that back to the same level as this keyframe. Again I want the clip to go fast towards the end so we're gonna drag this last keyframe upwards. After you're done with it just save and export the video and you are all set. So that is all for this video guys. I know it was quite a long video but I hope you guys got to learn something new. Now if this video helped you guys even a bit, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a big fat thumbs up. Also guys let me know down in the comment sections uh, about what other tutorials you guys want and I'll probably make uh, another tutorial soon so yeah I'll see you guys in the next video.